Good evening. And welcome all of you who are joined us here in person or in Facebook land or Zoom land. We are certainly happy that you are here with us this evening. And please know that your presence makes a huge difference to this service. For those of us that are here live and in person, please make sure your cell phones are silenced. As we begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-meditation, I invite you just to get still and close your eyes as we pray, God is the love that I am. You may wish to chant along with it or listen to it in silence. Simply relax and use your breath. And breathe in and breathe out.
as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. And welcome to those who have joined us during our meditation while it was in progress. We are, I am so glad you are here, virtually or in person. Let's begin our, with our opening chant, God is in this place. Thank you, Mary, so much. It always makes my heart happy to hear you sing. So let us join together now in prayer. And simply close your eyes if you'd like to. And just turn inside and get cozy with God for the next couple of minutes. And feeling that divine presence that resonates in, through, and as each and every person here, wherever here is for us. Knowing the presence of God is always within us and never leaves us, no matter what our circumstances are. We are always in the presence of God, of God's love, of God's joy, of God's ability. For God created each and every one of us on purpose and for purpose. And we are here by divine invitation. And I invite each and every person just to simply open your heart and listen to Reverend Sidney as she delivers her message this evening. Not so much with our ears, but with our hearts and allow the words to just simply assimilate into our bodies and circulate and we absorb them into our bodies and our body remembers because the body really does contain sacred, wonderful memories for us. And we absorb them as she listens to the word of God and speaks it eloquently, joyously, and in her own unique and wonderful way. I am so grateful for this service, for this church that just keeps us together in person or in, in virtual reality. I am so very grateful for the tech team that supports us here in the sanctuary and at home. I'm grateful for our musicians. I'm very grateful for Mary being here this evening to sing with us and for Adam who supports us with sound and those who do the lights and all the wonderful things that are beyond my comprehension. They are each and every one of us <laughs> Each and every one of us are guided, although sometimes my language isn't. Um, I say thank you, God, for bringing us here by divine appointment and divine invitation, and thank everyone who said yes to that invitation. And it is with a happy heart I simply say, and so it is, and together we simply say, Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll buy for everyone here. <laughs> Good evening. <sighs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he saw that it was good, and lo, he created some other stuff, like, you know, whales, oceans, firmaments, skies, light, that kind of thing. And he saw that it was good. And lo, God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And lo, God blessed them and said unto them, why are you so miserable? You are living in the Garden of Eden, paradise for God's sake, for my sake. It seems like all I ever hear from you is how you don't have enough money, you don't have enough stuff or enough love. What the heck is going on down there? Stop whining. Get over yourselves already. This is supposed to be a celebration, and frankly, you are ruining my party. And lo, Adam, who was created in God's image, said, geez, God's kind of a buzzkill. I know, right? So we don't actually think of God as a he or a robed, bearded guy who sits up in the sky and is keeping score and making sure that he has, you know, little tally marks of, oh, well, you screwed that up. That's sex for you. You know, that's not the God that we know. But what we do know and believe is that that infinite presence and power, which created and sustains the planets in their orbits, keeps the tides rising and falling, and ah, came up with the detail and the beauty of a rose is that same amazing, infinite organizing spirit which indwells you and me. Can we agree on that? Oh, good. I'm so glad. I hate to start off the evening in conflict. <laughs> so it is both magnificent source and dynamic substance. Think about that. Magnificent source and dynamic substance. It is, as Meister Eckhart said, and a whole bunch of other scholars, by the way, before and after him, I think the first one was probably St. Augustine, said that it's that universal loving presence whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. Whose circumference is nowhere, his center, its center, her center, the center of God is everywhere. That means right here, right here, right there, right there, right there. All of it, this is where God is centered. We are a center for the divine operation of God. It is a celebration. It is an, an amazing dynamic expression of infinity. That's what we are. So in Science of Mind, we believe that because we have chosen to be conscious and to align on a daily basis with this great truth of our being, we know that we are a part of God. We know that we are a part of the whole, of the one. That it's not just that we are a part of it, by the way, that we are in it, we are as it, we are of it. That whole includes us, and there's nowhere you and I can go to be outside of it. There's no circumference. Remember, it's all God, all God, all God, all the time, 24-7, 365. As a branch is to a tree, we are expressions and extensions of God. And just as that branch has all of the same identifiers, all that same kind of DNA, ge genetic information as the trunk and the roots of the tree and the seed from which it sprang forth, we have all the same properties of God, our source. Just think about that. We are each branches from that tree. We are each branches from that tree. So it's easy enough to say, but it's a little bit more challenging to accept, which is why we study and we contemplate and we work with each other. We work with practitioners. We work to really understand and develop a greater consciousness. And by the way, the word consciousness, you hear it a lot around here, and I think that we, we could do a better job defining what that means. It means knowing the presence of God within. That's it. Knowing the presence of God, consciousness, just being aware. 
If you're somehow living from the core belief that the universe is limited or that there isn't enough to go around, and a lot of people live that way, right? Or that God withholds, God judges, or God fundamentally is not a passionate, powerful presence that is impelled to unfold, create, and thrive through its creations, then you need a bigger God. You need a big, fat, abundant God, which coincidentally happens to be my talk title tonight, Your Big, Fat, Abundant God. Now, how do we move from this idea of, of judgmental, shrewish, capricious, angry, oh my gosh, um, egotistical, hormonal presence that's a personality sitting up on a cloud that has somehow fallen off of his anger meds? How do we move to this idea of God as presence, God as energy, God as wholeness, God as the truth, the, the beginning, the middle, the end, the alpha, the mega, all of that, the whole big burrito, that is God. How do we move from this thing here to come back to this here and here? So Ernest Holmes, the founder and the teacher, wrote this the founder of this, this organization, this teaching. We are not caught in a universe controlled by a blind force. We are in the midst of and part of an intelligent, continually creative, dynamic, conscious, conscious activity. No randomness in this, no randomness. God is ever going forth into new expression and every word we speak, every thought we think is a further creative activity of God at the level of our expression of God. So as we mirror that tree, as we the branches are just like the tree, we the expressions of God, we do what God does. We do what God does. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell us. That's what Buddha tried to tell us. That's what so many have tried to tell us is that we are not all that God is, but all that we are is God, glorious organized design. We are not random. We are not accidents. We are not mistakes. So this idea that God is ever going forth into new expression, new celebration, new, new ideas, new modes of creativity, that's a much bigger, fatter, more abundant idea of God, don't you think? It's one that I like a lot. And especially when we're gonna talk about abundance, we're gonna talk about prosperity and what that actually means and, and try to get through any of those belief systems, BS, our belief systems about our limitations or God being limited. Oh, you haven't heard that one before. Okay, well, we want to get rid of all of the BS. Um, belief systems, don't, don't, don't censor me. <laughs> There's a definition of prosperity that I really like from Charles Fillmore. And it is, it's, it's, so prosperity is not just about money, money, okay? So this is about the full knowing of God as our source. And he wrote this, the consciousness of God as the abundant, everywhere present resource, unfailing, ready for all who open it themselves to it through faith. Through faith. And that faith is the attitude. It is the thinking with which we approach our lives. It is the active approach with which we approach our lives. The active, oh, working towards and preparing ourselves to be a place for the expression of God. Last week we talked about how to do that, how to come up with these ideas of active faith. How do we act in faith? How do we create ourselves to be ready for what we call our demonstrations? How do we become those vehicles? And it's that we move into the consciousness of that thing already done. We become that person that we already, that we want to be before we've gotten there or not. So if we want to be an artist, we begin to live in that consciousness of the artist. We do as the artist would do. We get our hands on a paintbrush. Or if we want to be a musician, a high-level musician, we do. We live in that consciousness. Consciousness. We, we contemplate all that we need to know. We study music. We practice. We live as that professional. And we, are, we make clear choices that support the development, the expression, the gestation of our dream, of our desire. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So it is that same idea, that is what we do through faith. We live and move 
and have our being in this. But guess what? This is the part nobody ever tells us. The presence of God, that it, moves and lives and has its being as each of us. We are a necessary and vital part of that equation. Without us, without this, you, 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 all as celebrations of God, there ain't no celebration. Because we are the sentient beings who recognize it, can replicate it, can enjoy it, can celebrate it even more, and can connect with others in that consciousness and share that. That's a big deal, right? That's a big, fat, abundant deal. So in many traditional churches and a lot of teachings, we hear a lot about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so what we teach here is that the kingdom of God is right here and right now, in, as, and through us. It is within. The kingdom of God is within. Or we will hear the kingdom of God is at hand. At hand meaning this hand right here, right now. So if we believe that God is right here and right now surrounding and filling us, does it, what does it mean when we talk about that entire kingdom of God? What does it mean about that bigger idea, right? That bigger consciousness, that bigger space. David Owen Ritz is a retired religious science minister, and he had this to say, the kingdom of God is the greater spiritual reality that surrounds you and indwells you. It's the realm of pure, unlimited possibility and potential and it is already yours. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to perform for it. We don't have to have a, a new resume, get a recommendation, or know somebody. It's already who and what we are. But the problem is we don't know it. We don't know it, or we don't know it fully. And we think that there are there must be gaps in God because the kingdom of God I'm experiencing, well, it's not as full as I, as I really think it should be. So there must be gaps in God. No, the gaps are in our perception of our worthiness, our wholeness, our divinity, our perception, our knowing, knowing of who we are. So if it's already mine, if it's already yours, how do, we, how do we get to be in this kingdom? How do we get to actually feel it, experience it, and start now to enjoy this kingdom, this bigger presence? So I believe that living in this and really, really fully experiencing it means that we have to understand that this relationship that we have with this creative power and presence is a partnership. It's a partnership. It's not God over here or up there or around there. It's God within and as us, always seeking to inform us of a greater knowing, of a greater love, of greater possibility. But our part of the partnership is to listen and to cultivate a way to listen broadly all the time and to respond. And I believe that our partnership is very dependent on, on our living in active co-creation with God. So passivity doesn't work well with God. We can't sit and wait for things to happen to us. It, in this teaching, we, don't, we just don't live that way because we recognize, bless you, that it, it only puts us in a place of feeling like we are out of control, that we don't have choice, that we don't have the options, that we don't have access to that which we want. So we have to be in active co-creation with God, active partnership, active, active relationship with God. So there is this thing called the divine law of circulation, and you and I are already participants in it, whether we know it or not. So let's talk a little bit about spiritual laws, okay? We talk about laws a lot here, and let me just say this. We live in a universe that is governed by laws, principles, if you will, that are absolutely consistent, dependable, and they're operational full-time. They don't care if we know about them or we, whether we do or we don't know about them. They're always fully in operation and they're both physical and spiritual. No one can live beyond or above the laws or circumvent their operation. They shape every circumstance and touch every condition of our lives, whether we know it or not. So spiritual laws and universal laws work with or without our agreement. They work without our permission. 
but consciously and wisely working within the principles that govern our universe is so much easier than resisting or denying the way the universe works. Now, I believe that this universe is always moving towards greater expression, greater wholeness, greater harmony, greater possibility, greater celebration. You know, we get very, very pious and, and still and, and boring because we don't recognize that this is the celebration. This is, we are God's celebration of itself. We are God's demonstration. So the thing that we have to know though is ignorance of how these laws work it doesn't give you a pass. They're still gonna work, right? Whether or not we believe in them or even like them. So let's get a little context by looking at some of the obvious ones. Gravity does not insist on my understanding, but I am yet to see anyone or anything go randomly flying off into this universe willy-nilly. We are all subject to the laws of gravity. And though Isaac Newton didn't formally dis discover, quote unquote, or hypothesize about the principle of gravity until the 17th century, do you know that birds flew before that? It worked before that. So my cat has never studied gravity. I'm pretty sure he can't spell it either, but he definitely benefits from it. He has a very special talent in that he can stay in a little furry sleeping lump all day without moving. Gravity just lets him. In fact, it supports him in that intention. Um, and I'm beyond certain that when I get home tonight, the dishes I left in the sink this morning will not be levitating around the ceiling fixtures. They are gonna be sitting right where I left them unless my husband did them, which he usually does. Although that's probably more about inertia. So that's a different talk. What about electricity? So Dr. Mark talked about laws a little bit the other day. And I'm grateful I don't have to understand much about electricity. I get that there are polar polarities of, of negative and positive. But beyond that, I just, use, I just use it. And I count on it to work every time. I turn on a light, I use my hair dryer, I charge my phone, and I, I work with my computer. I would be an absolute loss if I had to pr prove even a smattering of expertise about it. I do know if I abuse it, I'm gonna suffer the consequences of that, whether accidentally or intentionally. So long before Leonardo da Vinci and the Wright brothers observed and studied the laws governing flight, birds, yes, were able to fly, as were bugs, insects. There were a lot of flying things, a rock, <laughs> a paper airplane. And you know what? Even though I only got a C in high school physics, the airlines still take my credit cards if I want to fly somewhere. <laughs> and it's really good, by the way. Thank God I don't have to know how, the, how planes fly. They just do. Other people learn that, and I get to be blessed and benefit from, from their desire to know that. So the infinite intelligence that I call God is always working in, as, and through all of these facets of life, both seen and unseen. And there's no difference between a spiritual law and a physical law. A physical law is God expressing. Gravity is God expressing. Gravity is the order of God and expression in that form of that energy, that power, that presence, that principle that keeps things in their place, that keeps the planets orbiting that keeps us all from colliding into each other. Well, 405 freeway at five o'clock on a Saturday, that's a different story, but I, I know that we each are subject to these rules, to these principles, to these laws. I don't have to tell my body to grow fingernails, to digest food, it just does it. Thank God, I would forget. So sp spiritual law works the same way. No less true, no less impartial than the physical laws. They are universal, dependable, and constant, and they are innate to life itself. So think of spiritual law this way. Spiritual laws are the means by which the whole, think God, think infinite presence, relates to its member parts, the way God interfaces with the individual in the arena of personal life experience. The laws of life are spiritual principles that describe the natural dynamics of the creator and its creation. And again, that creator, by the way, is not moody, capricious, hormonal, passive aggressive, or political. Its nature is just to celebrate itself by means of creation. And we get to be the vehicles for that. We get to be the vessels for that. We get to be the instruments for God's creative celebration. 
So how many of us, though, woke up this morning and said, I am God's celebration of itself? Most of us, we had one person, I'm so glad, thank you. I know it takes at least one, <laughs> do the dance, that's right. It, it takes me at least one cup of coffee before I can even pronounce the word celebration. So, you know, let alone think of myself that way, but it is the truth. So remember what I said before, that the branch contains the properties, same properties as the tree. So what is true about God is true about each of us, whether we recognize and live from that awareness or not. And so it is with this law of circulation, which brings us back to our big, fat, abundant God. It's perhaps the most important law to understand because it's the principle that governs the flow of abundance through your life. And this law says that the universe, though finite in nature, functions like a closed circulatory system. What we give out at every level, feelings, thoughts, intentions, attitudes, or material things, comes back to us in kind, creating an incoming flow that keeps pace with our giving. Everybody breathe. Now exhale. We are intelligent, sentient beings, and we have will, and we have choice, and we can choose to work with these spiritual laws so that we are empowered and our lives are blessed. And that is a powerful thing to consider. Really think about this. That this law, whatever we give out, comes back to us in kind. It responds to us. If you get deeper into spiritual study with this church, and I hope you will, we call this idea, there are a couple of words for it. One of them is embodiment. And it's one of my favorite ideas in the science of mind. When we embody a principle, when we embody an idea, when we embody, so fully embody an idea or a dream or a desire that we can feel it before it's in our wor world as a manifest concrete form. But when we embody it, that is what we are giving this law of circulation, this spiritual law to work with and it has to respond in kind. It has to respond. And it responds so much to our emotions, to our emotional tone. Now, where do I wanna go with this? I want you to know that this is such a, a, a beautiful, amazing possibility for each of us, and it doesn't take great years of schooling or skill or, or, or anybody, me included, saying, you've got the power. None of us can do that. However, it does take the willingness to know that there is a possibility greater than the one you are experiencing right now. It takes a willingness to know that the unseen will be responsible for that which is seen. It takes that willingness. It takes that that acceptance. And sometimes when I work with people and they don't want to accept the possibility that life could be better, that it could be greater, and that they have such an important role in that, that it's not just a random thing that happens to them, that God likes some people better, that life likes some people better. And my response is, well, how is it working for you now to believe that it's random? How is it working for you now? Would you be willing to consider that there's another way to approach your life? Would you be willing to consider that planting a seed of possibility is a better way to go, as opposed to dwelling in a, in a land of fear and misery and doubt? I was reading Joseph Murphy earlier today. Joseph Murphy was a divine science mystic and minister. He passed many years ago. But he used to say that the desire is God announcing its presence as you. The God is announcing that it's time. He, the, the technical way that he said it was that the desire is the thing itself in its incipiency. In other words, the desire is like that oak, that, that acorn. 
everything necessary for that tree is in that acorn. So when we have these dreams, when we have these desires, and we, we tend to negate them or push them aside thinking, well, I could never be that person. I could never do that. I don't know enough. I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. Whatever it is, we tend to not realize that that desire is actually saying, I choose you, and the time is now. Let's do this together. And that's what a desire is. That's what a dream is. So I want you to just look within yourself for a moment and think, what is that desire? What is that dream? And it's saying, I choose you. The time is now. Let's do this. And how can you begin to nurture and embrace and embody that desire in different stages of its unfoldment? Maybe that desire is for a loving relationship. How does it feel? Can you imagine? See, imagination is the key here. Neville Goddard wrote, and he wrote this a lot, and he talked about it a lot, that... And by the way, Neville Goddard, I think, is the guy that Wayne Dyer got all his information from, because he was another mystic, who, American mystic, who lived in this country during um, the, the middle of the last century. And one of the things he said is, imagination is our clearest, cleanest, strongest, most deep connection to God. Our imagination is that Christ within us. It is our connection to God. So don't ever let anybody tell you you're a daydreamer. Holy cow, you a daydreamer? You're a mystic. In my book, you're a mystic. Imagination is the key to this. It is the deepest connection to God. It is the clearest, most imminent, immediate connection to God. So being able to imagine that desire in its fulfillment or as it's coming true, that is that power. And that's what we give the spiritual law to work with so that it can respond and co-respond, co-respond, to that which we are feeling in here, this thing that's beginning to dance and stir within us and saying, I want something greater. I want something more. The, the idea isn't to squelch that. It's to bless that. It is saying, I'm here. The time is now. I choose you. We want to have this powerful partnership with our big, fat, abundant God. And how do we do that? How do we build a, a um, how do we build a partnership? So the first thing I want to say is praise. There are three things that I, I will offer you, but the first one is praise. And that means gratitude, basically. If you don't have a gratitude list or a gratitude journal, oh my goodness, start one tonight. Start it tonight. Start it in your mind as you're driving home. List what you're grateful for. It's going to take you about two minutes, maybe more, because you'll get so excited about it that you're not going to want to stop at two minutes. It's a powerful and immediate tool for transforming your life. I promise you, if it, it is a part of a regular spiritual practice, and I'm thinking that the world has not yet reached critical mass when it comes to gratitude and thanksgiving. But think about how it could, how things could shift, because that is the energy of attraction. That is... Dr. Mark the other day talked about magnetic filings, how we used to play with those little magnets when we were kids. So that magnet is the gratitude, and it pulls all of the joy that we want to us because it is attracting its own... Oh, I'm running out of words here. It just attracts its own. How's that? Everything we do has the imprint of the attitude and the energy with which we do it. So when we express gratitude and praise for that which we already have, we are telling the law and ourselves that not only are we grateful for the stuff of the universe, but we are good stewards. We can be trusted with it. There is a magnetic response to gratitude. Love and joy cause expansion. Don't believe it? You want to test it? Close your eyes for a moment. And just notice how you feel when you enthusiastically feel gratitude for someone or something in your life that you love. Maybe your partner, your spouse, your pets, your car. Gratitude doesn't need an object. Maybe it's your favorite chocolate. Maybe it is that first cup of coffee in the morning. Now sense how your entire being gets lighter and it's as if you were being 
given the opportunity to glow. That's gratitude. That's gratitude. See how easy that was? Now open your eyes, take a breath. Fear, bitterness, and resentment, by the way, constrict and block. We want to be open and flowing with God. So don't just make this an intellectual exercise. Really dive deep into the things that you are grateful for. Feel and embody the joy of being blessed. Use your imagination. You might have to pretend before you get there. You know, you might have to pretend, what would it feel like if I were really, really excited about this chocolate? Okay, first of all, anybody not excited about chocolate? That's, that's a bad example. What would it feel like if I were really, really excited about just where and who I am today? What would that feel like? That's the imagination part. And that when I am doing this, it's interesting when I start and my mind is blank and I start thinking, what am I grateful for? And I start looking around the room. I start listing and I get really excited. And suddenly I go from being kind of bored and boring to charged up and enthusiastic about life. And by the way, I'll end up listing everything from my husband, my son, our animals, our home, and this church to nachos, good wine, and having a good hair day. I will absolutely go for all of it because, again, gratitude doesn't require, it doesn't require an object or a topic in order for it to be experienced. It just needs to be felt. That's why we have the gratitude step when we do our spiritual mind treatments, when we do our prayers here. We feel gratitude. We feel what it is to be thankful. That's where we go with that. So this practice is going to jumpstart, I promise you, your abundance consciousness. If you do it, it's really powerful. So I found this passage from um, an Eric Butterworth book in The Flow of Life. And it explains this mystical process of co-creation and partnership with God. When a bolt of lightning flashes in the sky and crashes into a tree, you are experiencing an illusion what the eye does not see is the tiny leader bolt of energy that shoots down to make contact with the tree. The massive charge that lights up the sky is the great voltage of the Earth's mass flowing up into that tiny bolt into the clouds. It is not the lightning from the sky that strikes and destroys the tree, but the tremendous charge that flows from within the tree itself. That's you and me. The presence of God within is that same tremendous charge that flows from within the tree itself, only it's flowing with, from within ourselves. It dwells within us, and it's forever seeking to pour forth in joy and possibility and energy, creativity, delight, humor, all of that. So prosperity is an inside job. It doesn't happen from out here. You know, our, our paychecks may seem to come from out here. We'll have different channels, but that flow starts from within. It is that flow, just like the tree, the, the energy of the earth flowing up through us, the energy of God flowing up through us. It comes from inside. It comes from our innate spiritual identity, which we cannot deny. You couldn't if you wanted to. You can stand in ignorance of it. Don't. Don't. Our, jobs, our job is to begin to know us as God knows us. That is your job. Our bank accounts start to know us as God knows us when we do this. Our health starts to know us as God knows us. Our relationships start to shift in ways that lead us into better communication, understanding, health, and connection. When we know ourselves as God knows us, then life starts to know us as God knows us. It starts to respond to us. It absolutely does because that is the principle of life. That is the principle of life. So big, fat, abundant God is the truth about you and me. We are here for God to celebrate its own infinite, big, fat, abundant nature as our big, fat, abundant lives, jobs, bank accounts, relationships, health, joy, and fulfillment. Okay, so here's your homework. Three things, praise. We already talked about that. Get those gratitude journals in your list going tonight. Give, give. Systematic giving breaks the belief in lack. That's why we do it. Never think that you don't have anything to give. Start right where you are. 
Show big, fat, abundant God that you are creating a big, fat, abundant flow of giving and receiving. You think you don't have something to give? You do. You do. It's your talent. It's your time. It's your tithe. It's your presence. Maybe it's just your presence. Maybe somebody needs you to be there and to hear them, to just sit with them. Give where you can. Start where you are. And then finally, forgive. So we praise, we give, and we forgive. If there is a block in any area of your abundance, look for something or someone in need of forgiveness. When we have something in the way of knowing ourselves as God knows us, then life will respond to that as well. So begin now to practice giving love for whatever that experience was. Give peace for that thing. Give understanding and compassion for that event, whatever it was. Forgive. Forgiveness is for giving. And it is for the givingness of the universe to give to us, in us, as us, and through us. Let's pray. Ah, so we take a moment, just breathe in, and releasing that breath, sit in this wonderful knowing, this recognition that we can, as Mary Catherine said, cozy up to God and know ourselves as that big, fat, abundant experience of life, that we are here to know ourselves as spirit knows us, divine, creative, joyful, fun, innovative, wondrous, magnificent. That is the truth of who and what we are. And as I speak these words right here and now for all of us, I know that that is the experience we have as we leave this sanctuary tonight. I know indeed that there has been a shift in our collective consciousness and our collective knowing that each of us is the presence of God expressing that we know ourselves as God knows us, that we know each other as God knows each of us, that we know that we are going Ah, love to love, heart to heart, God to God. We meet each other and see God. Everywhere we look, we see that face of God and we feel that love of God for truly God is all there is. So I know that as we move out into the world, we are blessed by all of this and we are a blessing in this world. This church is a blessing and so we, we correspondingly bless it right back. We bless this church. We bless all churches all ashrams, synagogues, temples, mosques, all paths to God. We know that we are, ah, we are here for light, and we are that light, and we allow it to flow through, th throw, flow through us into everything that we are doing, all that we are being, and it returns to us in such beauty and in such joy, and we are profoundly grateful for it. I release this word into God's law, knowing it is so, and together we say, Amen. Digital Sam is not as much fun as non-digital Sam, but we're very, very grateful that he has created tracks so that Mary was able to sing. You are awesome. Yay. You are so awesome.
So we have a number of ways that you can give, and Mary Catherine's going to talk to you about that. But right now, I want to encourage you and invite you to take your love offerings, your gifts, your tithes, and to hold them in your hand and just with such a sense of joy and gratitude that we get to give and hold them to your heart. And we're going to say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Mm, and so it is. Thank you. I want to invite Mary Catherine O'Hart back up here. She's got some wonderful announcements for you. So please stick around. Thank you, thank you. I know this is what you're all waiting to hear, but please remember that when we donate, that we are absolutely being of service and it is of sacred service. And I want to let you know of a couple of different ways you were able to do that. We can make donations by calling the church office at 818. 762-7566, or we can uh, go to online and do it at nhcrs.org forward slash give, or text the word give to 818-457-3419. And another way, and especially with the holidays coming up, and some of us tend to shop a little bit more, uh, we can go to Amazon Smile and select uh, our church, which you will find under Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood. And at, when it asks you to choose the, the charity of your choice, and then at no cost to you, a portion of what you spend will be donated back to the church. And it's really a lovely, simple, no frills, easy way to do that. And if you would like prayer for a practitioner, it will be available here in the sanctuary for those of us that are here, and it's also available on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook and you'd like to pray with a practitioner, just switch over to Zoom and someone will be happy to pray with you. You may email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or put a prayer request in the box in the back of the sanctuary. And another way is you can send your prayer request um, in, I already gave that address, prayer at nhcrs.org, and you can call the church office and just press option four. And if we need a prayer up list, Mary, is it up option three? Yes. For dial of prayer. Mary's are, has been, um, and her crew have been doing dial of prayer for as many years as I can remember. And if you need a little pick me up when you're not at your very best, you might want to call and hit option three and just hear a beautiful little prayer. The prayers are changed every week and it's spoken by one of our practitioners and it's always spoken from the heart. And it's a nice thing to do for yourself. Let's see. Our next Wednesday evening service. Are you doing, are you already enough next week? Yes, okay. you are already enough. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you recognize that. 
God and I already know them. So that will be next Wednesday evening. You may join us at 6.50 for um, in-person or online meditation. And um, the service will begin again at, at 7 o'clock. Our youth church is open, which is just lovely for those that have kids and child care issues on Sunday morning. But just for the 9.45 service, because that's the only one we're doing currently. Our grief support group is available on Zoom, and you may join practitioner Carol, Carol Winnaker. And if you've never taken any of her classes, she's just wonderful. She's so thorough, and she just really knows her stuff. And you don't need to be grieving the loss of someone in your life. You can be grieving the loss of a home or a job or an income or just anything, just loss of your ambition for crying out loud. Just go and get a wonderful spiritual pick-me-up with Carol. That will be this Sunday at 1 o'clock. And there's a circle of healing coming on October 17th at 11.30 a.m. Let's see. It's going to be led by practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart. And that name, that name sounds vaguely familiar to me. In case you can't read it, it's me. For those of you out in virtual land who don't know me. And it's a wonderful, gentle, healing, uplifting, not a lot of hoopla, um, prayer service that helps you heal. And you don't need to be healing from a, uh, an illness, any dis-ease in your life that is just kind of festering somewhere deep in the crevices of your consciousness and you want to get them out, please join us in the sacred service. It'll be right here in the sanctuary. We have people that, uh, some are practitioners, some are lay people that have been trained to do the uh, very loving and gentle healing. Um, because of uh, COVID, we're not actually doing the hands-on that we normally do. We just do kind of hands over, sort of Reiki style. And it's a lovely experience to sit and pray and be in the consciousness that just helps all of us heal and helps us all lift up. Again, that's going to be Sunday, October 17th at 1130 here in the sanctuary. And we are still looking for people to host services on Facebook Live. This is one of the easier techno things to learn. So if you're interested in joining uh, this, and it's a lot of fun, and it's another way of being a, of service, please call the church office and talk to Terry, and she'll take care of you. We have Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And we have a wonderful Zoom meditation every morning at 8 o'clock, Monday through Saturday. The meditation part is uh, 15 minutes long, but we do start a little early because we like to talk a lot. And we hang around for a few minutes afterwards just to chit-chat. It's a lovely group, so please come and join us tomorrow morning. I will be there at 8 o'clock. So, Mary, do you have a website where people can get... You take you home? No. Okay. So you have to come and hear her in person. And now um, Reverend Sydney is going to pray us out. Thank you. Well, and I also want to say some thank yous here. Um, and first of all, actually, if, let me take this off. Ah, Mary Highland's music. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And if you do want to get some of her music, and I recommend because it's really good, you can email her at marhylc at aol.com. That's the way to do it. Marhylc at aol.com. All right. I need to thank some people. Gail Palat, thank you for holding vigil tonight. And our Facebook Live support was with Liz Racy. And our Zoom support tonight was Barbara Berg and Ray Reagan, or Regan. And we have some co-hosts, our, our Zoom co-host, Robin Wolford was our Zoom host, and Ray Reagan is our Zoom associate. I know. And then in the sanctuary, this place here, lights and sound. Adam, thank you so much. And our greeters, ushers tonight, Greg Johnson and Terry Prince. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a sanctuary media team, and tonight it's Doreen Rima, Remo, sorry, Nikki Zavara, Mark Crowell, and Blair Thompson. And you guys rock. And Mary Catherine, thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again. I love that we have all of this going on here. So tell your friends. We would like to, you know, there's something juicy about being in the room. There's just something juicy about being in the room. And we can do that. We're doing it safely. So I hope that you will bring your friends and your family. I would love to see you. I'll be here again next week. And like she said, the topic is, you are already enough. So let's pray. 
from the love of pure spirit within us. I know that we are blessed beings, that we have been shifted, that we have been lifted, and that we have been transformed in the ways that our heart has been calling us to be transformed, and that indeed we are a blessing in the world and that each of us has found that gift or does find the gift, and that we are open to that revelation and that understanding, and we move out into our lives once again, renewed, revitalized, re-inspired, refired, rewired, and that we know that God is right where we are and all is well, and we draw upon that, for we are the expression of that big, fat, abundant God, and we know it to be so. So I bless each of us on this journey knowing that it is all God, it is all good, because I say so, I say so, and I know it is so. With gratitude, I release this word into God's law. I let it be so, and together we say, amen. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.